Hilda de la Yata. Um, I am 64 years old. I was born in uh, 1957. I'm originally from Brownsville, Texas, born and raised there. Uh, my family is from Matamoros, Tamaulipas, uh, descended from Spain and from other European countries. And um, I lived in Austin for 30, a little over 30 years. And today I'm here to speak to everybody, whoever is like listening. Um, the topic today would be uh, genealogy. And um, I just got really, really interested in it because I'm very similar to my mother, actually, and uh, she had already started uh, building our tree on her side, on, on my mother's. Uh, her name is Solis. My mother's maiden name is Solis. My father's uh, name, or last name, I would say, uh, is De La Yata, which is my last name, Hilda Ana De La Yata Solis. So this here is uh, my mother's family tree on the Solis, on her dad's side. And, um, she had worked on a smaller version of this back in 1977, when I was 20 years old. And from there, I got really interested in, in it, and I started expanding it and, and, and researching and finding a few more names here and there until I made this. Um, recently, I have, been, I have been working on my family's genealogy, I would say close, approximately now, I would say 28 years. But seriously, I would say the last 20 years, more and more. My mother recently passed away two years ago, and uh, I was left, she left me all her archives and all kinds of records that my mother had, uh, including some uh, very rare books uh, regarding the first family uh, to Tamaulipas. On her side of the family, uh, Don Juan Jose de Solis from El Rancho El Seño, uh, was where we come from, my mother's family. Uh, he was one of the original founders of Matamoros Tamaulipas. All these people came originally from another state of Nuevo León, uh, Cerralbo, which was the first capital of Monterrey, Nuevo León. It was not Monterrey, as many people think, but it's actually Cerralbo, Nuevo León. First capital. This is back in the 1600s. The Matamoros Tamaulipas was founded in 1766, Don Juan José de Solís married to Gertrudis Hinojosa González, daughter of Crisóstomo Hinojosa and Maria Margarita González Ochoa. So, um, they started, they, they were one of the first uh, family families of Matamoros, and from that, we have that history of that. They several books on the internet. Now, you need to know that when I first started doing all this research, uh, there was not a whole lot available uh, online like there is now. What little there was, well, I would look and look and look. It was when computers were barely coming out. There was, a, remember, the big PC, the fat thing, and with a little tower, and like all this plug and all these wires everywhere. So uh, from that to now, we've come a long way. The other thing is, the good news is that now, 20-something uh, years later, uh, I have found a lot of information regarding my tree. It's not this, of course. This is the one I have been working on for a long time. First, I joined a, a group that I was invited to. It's by invitation only, and it's called the Mexican Genealogy Group. And uh, it's all the people like in South Texas and Northern Mexico. It, it, and, and there's other help. It, 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 these people, what the group does is basically, we're not experts, we're not genealogists, but, um, but there are some in the group that help others. They say, well, we have spare time. Some people are retired, some people are still working. But the bottom line is that through that group, the founder of that group, Don Moises Garcia, is, uh, he's, he's written several books regarding the different families, different clans, uh, especially the people that founded, uh, that came with Jose de Escandon, the Count of the Sierra Gorda. Okay, Jose de Escandon was sent by the king uh, Tamaulipas, which was called, he called it Santander back then, where it was, she's from Santander, Sota la Marina, España, Spain, Cantabria, near France, okay? Northern Spain, basically. And so he would name all the towns that he founded with all these families, founding families, uh, different names, Camargo, all that is in Spain. Say Sota la Marina, there's a Sota la Marina in Tamaulipas. So the state of Tamaulipas back then in the, in the mid to late 1700s was basically barren. 
So they, he took different families and different uh, uh, colonels and different generals uh, that belonged to, to the you know, Armada of Spain to, to go take families to be founding members. So they opened up all this new frontier, basically. Basically the same thing that uh, the, the British did, uh, or, or one that you know, the Americans did when they moved west to, to California. You know, the gold rush, basically in wagons, you know, same thing, basically the same thing, but it was here in Mexico. The other thing you need to recall is that back then, Texas was part of Mexico, and that's why they had land on either, on either side. To this day, there's many, many families that have that had land grants, including my family. Many, I have a book on all the land grants of Texas, it's called. Many people sold, you know, that they don't own any, anymore. A few, very few families still own part of this land. So the other really, really important thing right now that's happening and, and why I'm doing this is because from the, joining that group, I was able to look into things that people were writing a little bit about my family. I was also able to help some of the members find some of the members, find some of the books, rare books that I have. One very rare book would be, I'm sorry, it's kind of falling apart. Give me a second here. I don't want to ruin this, but uh, I have this book, Las Fundaciones del, uh, de, de José de Candón, the Count, you know, the, the, the Tamaulipas, which was something at the time. So this book is a very rare book. Really can't find it on Amazon mm -hmm. or anything like that, but you might find it in a, in a rare bookstore. I found this in Mexico City, mm -hmm. uh, maybe about 30 years ago, maybe. Mm -hmm. Okay, and my family's here. Okay, so... Also, the interesting thing is that José de Escandón, the Count, uh, had moved to from Spain, uh, had, a beautiful, had a beautiful house, and mm -hmm. it's still the family house it, mm -hmm. in Querétaro. Mm -hmm. I'm in Guanajuato right now, by the way. I forgot to mention that. I'm in Guanajuato, Guanajuato, the capital mm -hmm. of uh, here, and I moved here because I retired recently mm -hmm. uh, from Texas, uh, from the restaurant business. So basically, this book is a very, very important book. It's very detailed. Mm -hmm. Each member of each clan, of each family, what they had, how much money, how much grains they had, how many horses, how many sheep, mm -hmm. whether they had uh, 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 servants, whether the servants were married. It's very, very detailed. It's so beautiful uh, because, uh, well, it's a little bit, a little bit too much information. Some of them said that, it, you know, like for instance, one person had a, a son that was uh, illegitimate and they'll call him bastardo. And I think kind of, that's a little harsh, but that's the way things were written back then. But it has a, a beautiful, beautiful information uh, on this that, you know, that you can't sometimes find anywhere else. So I was able to help some of the members in that group. Mm -hmm. Through this group, the Mexican genealogy group, I was, uh, I, I, I started looking online to archive things that I have now access to through this group, mm -hmm. including books uh, that they, they've been written about different families. And through that, I was able to join an online genealogy website that's one of the biggest in the world, actually. Mm -hmm. It's called Jenny, jenny.com. Mm -hmm. I found uh, my, my mother's family there. And basically, I didn't, my mother was not in there. I said, why? My grandfather was not in there. And the reason being is that they had a mistake, believe it or not. This is a very, very renowned website. They had a mistake. My great grandfather, my mother's grandfather, was uh, he was poor, uh, or he, he he was noted as a son to a woman that was already passed away. And so I noticed that right away, and that the reason we're not in the tree. So I wrote him a letter. I wrote him an email, basically, a really nice, detailed email uh, with the right facts. And I say, this is who I am. This is who my mother was. This is who my grandfather was. And he is the son of, and, and the man that you have there is being born to a woman named Anastasia Rivas Canales. Uh, that was his, that would have been his stepmother, but she was dead. So she couldn't, you know, be, have him. Look at the days of it. When she died and when he was born. It turns out that my great great grandfather married a younger woman when his wife died. She passed away. And you have that up to the point, it's all fine. All the other siblings, they, they're his half siblings. They're, they're not his siblings. So from that, they wrote me back and they checked out my story. They said, you're absolutely right. What do you have? I said, I have all the information I could fill in, you know, for this whole family. Mm -hmm. And they said, well, could we kind of add it on? And I said, I would love to. Because that's my tree. That's my family tree, actually. And that's what we did. And uh, from then on, they actually asked me if I wanted to be uh, one of the administrators with Jenny. Uh, I have access to... Any, any, all, everybody that's on there. I can look up anybody 
Um, I, only, I don't ever trace anything on anybody else's uh, uh, tree. I'm not, you know, I, I would never do that. But I have access to my tree, 10,000 people. Some of those lineages of my mother's family uh, go back to thousands of years, to many, many countries, to many countries, most, most European countries, including Portugal, Spain, France, England, Italy, Cyprus, Greece, many other countries. 